Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you and praise you for this day. Father, we ask now, Father, for your blessings and your favor over this service. Father, we pray that everyone here will be lifted up by your word. And we pray now that your word will go forth and it will not return void. It will accomplish what it was sent to do. Father, I pray now to watch over my tongue to everything that's said and done here today will be to the uplifting of your kingdom. In Jesus' most precious name, amen. <clears throat> so uh, a man and woman had been married 35 years and they were not necessarily happy. And so he finally subdued the pressure and they went to a marriage counselor. And so the marriage counselor had a very unique way of doing it. And he had a little podium. And it was when your turn to speak, you stood at the podium. So the wife was first and she stood up in a tirade. And it talked about all the things that he hadn't done and the dirty clothes and all of the things and over and over. And a laundry list. I'm sure she said lots of stuff, but the men weren't paying attention anyway. So in a few minutes, the guy had finally heard enough. And the counselor stood up, walked over there and passionately kissed the woman. And she was stunned with silence and walked and sat down. And he turned to the husband and said, she needs that three times a week. And he said, well, I can get her here on Monday and Wednesday, but Friday I fish. <clears throat> it was funnier than that. <clears throat> um, it, and I'm taking all the joke submissions y'all want. It's all good. Uh, this week's title is Waterproof. Um, you know, if you, if you have a, a boat, it, it, and as long as you don't get any water in the boat or too much stuff in the boat, the boat will float across however deep water you want to go across, right? It's not like rated for three foot of water or six foot of water. It's the same. The water is the same. And truthfully, for everybody in here, about eight foot of water, you can drown just as well as you can in about 10,000 feet of water, right? The, the depth of the water really makes no difference on the outside of the boat. The difference is, is the depth of the water that's inside of the boat. Because I don't care if you have a cruise ship, if you fill it up with enough water, it will go to the bottom or break it in half like they did the Titanic, right? So what happens on the outside of you, as a Christian especially, should not infiltrate to what happens on the inside of you. <clears throat> it's interesting, if you would, and, and it, this is kind of a, a starting point and then we'll go from there. But, and you don't have to turn there, but you can. But if you go all the way back to Genesis seven anybody know what happened in genesis seven well six was when everything was getting ready to to happen and everything was getting ready to go right and all the stuff right um seven uh noah was getting ready to, the flood was coming noah had built the ark all the stuff had went in and uh 16 7 16 the animals going in were male and female eleven living creature and god had commanded noah and then at the end of that, right, after he had prepared and he built the boat and got all the animals and did all the stuff and made all the preparations, that last sentence, and then the Lord shut him in. He waterproofed the outside, right? Like the last step. Like, you know, they didn't have like a pulley system to open the doors with some nice, you know, seals, some waterproof tight doors. The last thing that happened is, is God waterproofed the outside of the ship. He installed the door. That's pretty neat, right? I mean, I have had some boats that I wish God would have put his hand on and helped me make them better, right? Make them more waterproof. But at the last second, God shut them in and made the boat waterproof. Out of all the boats that's ever been made, the most important boat was that one, right? Right? That the history of humanity rests in those eight people and those animals and in that boat. And God made it waterproof. And it withstood one of the most uh, unbelievable storms, 40 days and nights, and, 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 and the whole world flooded. And, you know, depending on your science, but plate tectonics moves and, and everything shifted and the world changed completely during the flood, right? I mean, the, the glaciers and all the stuff. Yeah, yeah, all that. Right, But God shut them in and made sure it was waterproof. So when we are, uh, us as Christians, right, as we go through our daily life, how waterproof are you? How much does the stuff that happen around you and the circumstances that happen around you affect how you act, feel, think, walk, talk, right? 
And if you really start to think about that, right, we humans allow their circumstances to affect them, right? And we shouldn't. Christians, we shouldn't. Christians should know that a greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, and it really doesn't affect what's happening around me. I don't care if it's two foot deep or 10,000 feet deep, it doesn't affect me. My God still supplies all of my needs through his riches and glory. I'm still the same. He shut me in. See, when we became Christians, right, and, and the Holy Spirit came to live on the inside of us, the waterproofing is on the inside. It's not on the outside. It's on the inside. But the way God built us, we have a free will. See, not only will water on the inside of a boat sink it, sometimes if you, like, overload it, you could sink it, right? Like, if all of us went to get in my boat at the house, it wouldn't, well, number one, I don't know how we would do it. But if we could somehow stack ourselves on top of each other, when it got to the end of the ramp, it would go to the bottom. Because of all of the weight on the inside of it would overload what's on the, the buoyancy of the boat. You got me? Now, you choose what you put in your boat. You choose what you pick up to put in your boat. I mean, like, y'all might have all kinds of stuff in y'all, y'all's boat. I have a tackle box and a handful of rods and some life jacket somewhere, I'm sure, and a gas can, and that's about it. But if you were trying to, uh, to move stuff, you could overload the boat and sink it, right? Now, I know Mama and Daddy and Miss Terry and Mr. Bobby have a personal experience with sinking a boat. They sunk one out there going to Coon Hill camping. And they had overloaded the boat to where like this much of the boat was showing, right? And eventually they sunk the boat. Like right on the beach, they sunk the boat. But they sunk the boat. But as, as humans, we pick what's inside the boat. We decide what we carry with us from place to place and time to time. And what we should be doing is we should be recognizing when there's trouble around on the outside, there's going to be trouble around on the outside, right? Like, let's go to the the gospel according to John. Let's read it in red. Uh, The gospel according to John, chapter 16. Oh, I'll, I'll start with verse 31. So John 16, 31. Do you now believe in Jesus' reply? The time is coming, and in fact has come, that when you will be scattered, each to your own home, and you will leave me alone, yet I'm not alone, for the Father who is with me. Uh, 33, for I have told you this thing so that you may have peace. For in this world you will have trouble. But take heart, for I have overcome the world. He did not say, in this world, you might have trouble. He said, in this world, you will have trouble. There will be things that come against you. Our enemy is busy. You will have trouble. You will have things that don't go your way. You will have things that uh, happen to you for no apparent reason. Why do bad things happen to good people? Because Jesus said, the thief comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. You will have trouble. But he said, take heart, because I have overcome it. I have already beat it. You know, that whole boat um, example doesn't really work good when you're talking about Christ, right? Because even in the midst of the storm, he just walked out on the water. You know, he wasn't really concerned over the water in the boat, out of the boat, under the boat, above the boat, how much weight was in the boat. He just walked out on top of the water. But see, that's really where Christians should be. I don't care how rough the water is. The creator of the universe lives on the inside of me. I have a personal relationship with his Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of me. The one that walks across the top of the water, he's on my side. I don't care how deep the water is. I don't care how rough the water is. I don't care what everybody else is doing. He is in me. Is greater than he is in the world. See, the problem is, is, and and look, there is nothing earth-shattering or groundbreaking in this entire sermon. 
This is a reminder sermon. This is not a, oh, wow, I had a huge revelation. The problem is, is in our daily life, we continue to pile stuff in our boat over and over and over and over, and stress and work and kids and anxiety and ball and my team and your team and all the things, and we try to tote all of those things. And the heavier we get with the things that the world wants to hand us, the harder it is for us to stay on top of the water. What we should do is brush some of that stuff off and quitting allowing ourselves to be troubled with the trouble of this world. They don't apply to you. We don't belong here. This is only a short period of time that we here are here to visit. We are aliens. We're going home. But as much of the stress and strain and worry and fret and dread of this life that you're willing to tote, the enemy will bring you one more bucketful, one more spoonful, one more handful for you to be able to tote it as long as you want to tote it. And, that, and you know, it's tough, right? Because especially now, especially now, in this day and age, we have every convenience possible. We have every convenience possible. Think just a hundred years ago. We're getting further along. I'm getting old. Maybe 120 years ago. No electricity. No heating in there. No refrigeration. No indoor plumbing. That's just... They had houses and stuff. And horses and buggies and farms. Just think about... Pick one. Pick one convenience that you have. Right? Let, let, let's just say we're going to abandon air conditioning for 12 months. Just, or indoor plumbing. We're just going to abandon indoor plumbing for 12 months. And then you get some girl on Instagram saying that we are struck down but not abandoned. Because we are being oppressed as a Christian in this country at the moment. We are the most spoiled group of Christians that has ever lived. We have every convenience of every everything. Yet we look for things to pick up, to worry about, things to be upset over, things to be concerned over. Why exactly are we more anxious and more upset and more tired and more worried than we've ever been in the history of the world? We're on more drugs. We're doing more things. We're taking more stuff. Why exactly? Anybody want to guess? Because you can pull it up on your little thing and you can see what's going on. You know when Paul Revere was riding and said, the British are coming, the British are coming, and they rode through the countryside yelling? Now it would be like 19 people tweeting, well, the British ain't really that bad. Well, I don't even know why y'all are upset with the British are here. Well, this is theirs anyway. We were a part of them. I mean, can you imagine? On the battlefield, LOL. I mean, what are we doing? We're in the most spoiled place in history, and we're more upset and anxious and worried and concerned, and that's exactly what we're not supposed to be. I reckon I ought to open my book. <sighs> uh, turn with me to... Man, I didn't put them in order because I didn't know to order. So I'm going to try to get it right. Philippians. Um, Philippians and we'll chapter with uh, oh, chapter four and we'll start with verse four. Philippians four, four. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. For let your gentleness be evident to all for the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and that the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Just that, just that, if you don't take anything else from the whole sermon, just that, just verse 7, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds. See, the problem is, is what we allow on the inside of us is what affects us, right? What you allow on the inside of you is what affects you. 
like the boat in the water. We have to stand guard over what we watch and what we hear and what we believe and what we trust and what we depend on and who we are around and what they say. <clears throat> My kids are giving me a little bit of grief Friday night that you didn't ever let us do that. Well, you didn't ever let us do that. Well, you didn't ever let us do that. You're right. I didn't. I am much more concerned over what they see and who they're around and what they hear, right? We were very, not very strict, we were pretty strict on like what movies we watched and what they said and what they did. Why? Because that innocence is so easily lost. But you're in the same boat. We should be very concerned over what we subject ourselves to, where we're at, who we hang around with, what we listen to, what we believe, what we allow to affect ourselves. Because the problem is, is it seems like that like while we are here, we're like, amen, brother, preach the Bible. And then when we leave, it goes back on the coffee table and we forget about all the things and the promises and the protections that come with it. And then next Sunday, we'll pick it up and brush it off for a minute and then we listen to for a minute and then we go right back to where it was we allow the world to change us and corrupt us and move us and convince us that we are part of their system we are not part of their system we do not belong to them we are a new creation in christ we have been set free from all of the things that they are fighting over however <clears throat> You ever thought about like, you know, y'all, y'all watch Andy Griffith much? I, I love Andy Griffith. If, if you can't find nothing on TV, just turn on Andy Griffith and make you feel better about all of the world. I always think about Otis, right? Otis chooses to lock himself up. Like he comes in, takes the key, unlocks the cell, puts the key back up, closes the cell. That's how we do as Christians. We have been set free from all of this stuff. Well, you know, it's Friday night, so I need to go ahead and lock myself in the jail cell, give myself to this whatever, anxiety, fear, addiction, whatever you want to call it. And we just ho-hum and hang the keys back up and walk in and close the cell behind us. <clears throat> Turn with me to 2 Corinthians Uh, praise the Lord, that air condition cut on. Whoo, hallelujah. I know it's chilly outside, but it ain't in here. Uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 10, and we'll start with verse 3. For though we live in the world, we do not wage world, war as the world does. Verse 4, for the weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power. Listen to the divine power. To demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. And we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience. Not, not punish your act of disobedience. My act of disobedience. And we're going to put a guard over this. That we're going to come against every attack. Everything that builds itself up against the Word of God. Where? Here. Inside of me. Where I can't have any more water. Anything that builds itself up, that takes away from the power of God, anything that creates something on the inside of me that makes me doubt, that makes me fear, that makes me anxious, that turns me against what God's Word says, can't stay in my body it can't it can't stay I can't allow it to take root you can't allow it to take root for instance when I was about this big my granddaddy took me to the Shriners Circus right about this big and I allowed that instance that I am terrified of clowns. I'm not anymore because I'm an adult. I have finally overcome this. But when I was this big, 
And they got video of me saying, Papa, Papa, them clowns scare me. And I allowed that. I'm, I mean, it took, I had to be delivered, man. It took me years before I got to where clowns were okay with me. Like, I wasn't okay with Miss Jingles. We had a problem. I'm not okay with clowns. Because they smile at you whether they really smile or not, and I don't like it. But I allowed that to build itself up on the inside of me to create some fear that I gave something power over me that I know that I have been blood-bought, that I have been set free, that Jesus went into hell and threw back death and hell, and then I'm going to be scared of something? Can't, won't, will not. We're going to cast down every argument and demolish strongholds and set my spirit up to everything that I have on the inside of me is obedient with the Word of God. Now, how do you do that? Glad you asked. Uh, turn with me to Romans. You already know, you already know. If you hear a lot, you already know. Uh, chapter 12, in verse 1, Romans 12, 1. Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, for this is your true and proper worship. Verse 2. For do not conform to the pattern of this world, mm -mm -mm, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you will be able to test and approve God's will. His good, pleasing, perfect will. So when we get to where we can get to, do not conform to the pattern of this world. Well, everybody I know is doing it. I don't care. We still don't watch horror movies. I will not subject myself to that. Are you scared? Maybe. It's some primal urge. But I know in the end that it is not lines up with what the Word of God says. So then why would I allow it into my eye holes? Why would I? And look, I'm terrible at quoting movies. I am ho I'm horrible at it. I quote movies nonstop. It's like I'm, Chris bought me, it's so bad Chris bought me a t-shirt that says, I am fluent in movie quotes. Because I am. I constantly, I make so many references people don't get. So why would I watch something that doesn't line up with who I am to where I'm going to have that embedded in my brain that it's going to want to come out of my mouth? Because the Bible says that of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. So we do not conform to the pattern of this world. We do not allow it to build itself up. Because if you watch what the world's opinion is, is they think Jesus is this some little meek, horribly skinny, undefensible person that is just terrible when he is the Lion of Judah who is going to come back and set the world free. They have no idea. Why would I allow myself to listen to them being made fun of? I have a hard time watching the Passion of Christ to where they mock him and beat him. It makes me want to hurt somebody. Like those actors, like I want to go find those actors that beat on that man and beat them back. That I'm, like, I'm worse than Peter. Why would I subject myself to that? So we have to renew our mind, right? The other thing that we have to do, especially when things are coming against us, is we need to remember what God has done for us. See, that's, that's what the enemy doesn't want you to do. When you're getting attacked, it's, oh, everything's against you, and everything's terrible, and this is horrible, and you'll never make it, and nobody cares, and nobody ever going to care, and there's nothing you can do about it, right? That's just me. It, it's, you can't throw a strike. You can't ever hit the ball. You won't ever be any better than this. You're just dumb. That's as good as it gets. You're never going to get any better than this. When you start hearing the enemy talk bad about you, you ought to start thinking, what does God's word say about me? And then I want to go to what God told Joshua. If you can find it in a hurry, find it. If you can't, no big deal. I'm going to read it. <clears throat> So Joshua, 
Uh, the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 7, And be strong and very, cur- cur- bleh, very courageous. Be careful to obey all of the law my servant Moses gave you, and do not turn to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Verse 8, Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate, and, meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful in everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. For I com- have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. That's pretty powerful stuff. And you know what Joshua did? Joshua said, you know what? We, 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 we got to figure out a way that we're going to remember what God has done for us. Right? We're going to remember what God has done for us. So if you will, or you don't have to, flip forward to verse 4. Oh, where it is, there it is. Verse 4. So they, they, they take the Ark of the Covenant and they're going across the river and the river stood up on its side and when the whole nation, uh, chapter 4, when the whole nation finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, choose 12 men from among the people, one from each tribe, and tell them <clears throat> to take up 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan, from right where the priest is standing, and carry them over with you and put them down in a place where you stay tonight. So Joshua called together 12 men that appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe, and said, Go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. Each one of you take up a stone on his shoulder, according to the number of tribes of Israel, to serve as a sign among you that in the future, when your children are asked, What do these stones mean? That we can remember that the river stopped flowing. I don't know why that chokes me up so bad. <clears throat> God has done so many things for us in our lives that we are so blessed. Sometimes we forget because we forgot to pick up the rocks. <clears throat> when all the stuff is going on around us, all of this wars and rumors of wars and death and destruction and and viruses and all of this stuff is going on around us we need to come back to the place to where we know what god has done for us that we can remember and give thanks for what god has done for us to know that he has set us apart right it, it, was it important for them to pick up them 12 rocks eh. i mean i'm sure you think they didn't remember the river stopped Y'all ever seen a river stop? Like just st- stood up. Like, no, you don't flow no more. Sorry. But God wanted them to remember what happened. So they went in there and they picked up the stones to remember what happened. Well, how about that time you were set free? Well, what, how about that time you were delivered? How about that time you were healed? How about that time that your child was protected? Do we really, really remember what all God did for us? <clears throat> it, my kids love me I, you know we got into that the other night about you don't ever let me do this right and 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 somebody made the statement we're good kids and i'm like bro i i, I know you're good kids i mean you're fantastic kids i i i know i remember i know what you've done i can think about all the times that you had an opportunity to not do what's right and you did what was right Sometimes we get so bogged down into what's going on, we forget about the things that we know that we know. I know God is good all the time, every day. I can remember all of the times that he showed up and he did what he was supposed to do, what he promised me he was going to do. So then you get to the thing and like, well, how about that time you were in the boat and you were worried about the water? Hmm. Why? Why were you worried about what's going on around you? Psalms 91 says, 10,000 will fall beside you, but it will not come near me. Why am I worried about all of the water 
It's on the outside of the boat. But I can't see the land. Don't care. God's in the boat with me. Just like he told Joshua, where, he, where I go, where he goes. We get so wound up on what's going on around us that we can't see. We can't think. We can't remember. All of the things that God has done for us. So, waterproof. Waterproof. One, we renew our mind. Two, we remember what God's done for us. And three, probably should thank Him pretty regular about all the things that we've been delivered from, right? Four, and it's out of order, but I don't care. Quit picking up stuff and putting it in your boat that doesn't belong to you. If there are things that are going on in your life, Give it to God. First Peter says to cast your cares on him, for he cares for you. Quit taking them and putting them in the boat. Your boat is full. You don't need anything else. We don't walk according to this world. We don't live according to their standards. We have been set apart. Hope it touched you. Let's pray. <clears throat> father we just thank you and praise you for this day father we pray that your word will go forth and it will not return void father i thank you and praise you for this message and we give you praise and honor and glory for it in jesus most precious name amen